In this video, we're going to take a look at the best location to draw your ceiling planes. There's a few different options when you draw your ceiling planes, and it depends on what type of ceiling and if you plan to frame it, truss frame it, or if you're just an interior designer and you don't care about framing. Let's go into the program and take a look at the different methods and options for drawing those ceiling planes. When you draw four walls in Chief Architect, it automatically forms a room, and when you select that room, you can open it up and you can define the ceiling heights. In this room, I have a rough ceiling of 109 and an eighth and a finished ceiling of 107 and 5 eighths. In the section view, you can see the flat ceiling plane. It will span from the top of the subfloor, which is just below your sill plate, to the top of your top plates, and that gives you a calculation of 109 and an eighth and also provides to use a pre-cut stud at 104 and 5 eighths. When you create a cathedral ceiling, you can simply click inside of the room open up the dialog and remove the ceiling from the room and in the section view you'll notice the ceiling plane then disappears and allows the room to be open. That may work for most of your cases and if you have a thick enough framing rafter or truss then you can get your insulation in there and you may be done for your vaulted ceiling. When you need to draw a custom ceiling plane there are three locations that you can draw your ceiling plane to. Let's zoom into the diagram and take a little bit closer look. This wall, the dark gray layer, represents a 2x6 and the outside is towards the outside of the house. You can see a hash mark that represents this siding. Second is the location of the inside of that 2x6 and then finally the third location is on the wall finish. In this case I have a drywall. Each of these three locations will work fine but they have different outcomes. If you're an interior designer and don't care about the framing, I would typically focus on using the wall finish layer and I'll get to that when I cover that type of ceiling. To begin with, I'm going to draw a ceiling plane to the outside of the main wall layer. To begin with option one for location, I'm going to select the ceiling plane. I'm going to come on the outside of the main layer, click my left mouse button, continue over, release, and then I'm going to come up slope and I'm going to click. You can really click anywhere and then you can join the ceiling plane on the other side. Once I have this positioned, you can see the ceiling in the section view. Now this is a ceiling that I just drew and on the other side you're still seeing the default cathedral ceiling that the program will provide for you. Once I select this ceiling plane, use the copy reflect about. You'll then see that cathedral ceiling go away and I do have an invisible wall so we have a little bit of abnormal behavior in here. But you can see that this is a nice clean vault in here and that's one of the easiest ways to create a vaulted ceiling is for the location of that ceiling to go to the outside of that main wall. Now these ceiling planes are structural so when I select them you can frame them individually. If I've selected both of these, by the way, you can open them up and you can look at the structure. Right now I have my structure set at a uh, two by six. If you want to change that, here's where you'd change it in the structure. When they're selected, you can then select the framing down in the lower menu, build framing for selected objects. You can see the layers turn on, see them show up in the section view, and then when you use the full overview camera for framing, you can see that the perspective of that where that ceiling joist is now bearing on top of the wall. Before I move on and look at the second location of drawing that ceiling plane on the inside of the main wall layer, let's open up the ceiling plane and look at some of the settings in here. Inside of the dialog, if I lock the pitch here, you can take a look at the inside bottom height is 109 and an eighth. That represents this dashed line just above the top plates, 109 and an eighth. The outside bottom height of the ceiling is 106 and 3 eighths, if you can imagine that ceiling plane coming down to the outside of that wall, it would be at 106 and 3 eighths. Really the most important part is having that at 109 and an eighth on the inside of that wall so that it matches the top plate. Now the example we just went through works great for most ceiling planes and is typically the recommended way. Now if you were going to truss frame this and maybe not raise your ceiling off plate. There may be some ramifications of that and so you may in some cases don't want your structural member having bared on the outside of that wall. You may have a desire to pull it on the inside but maybe not frame it. Let's take a look at uh, drawing that ceiling plane. I'm going to delete the ceiling plane on the other side of the room and then I'm just going to pull this one back 
so that we still have that as a reference point as we need it. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete my framing. I'm going to choose the custom ceiling plane. I'm going to draw this one on the inside of the wall and we'll just come up partially so we can still see this in the section view. That's represented by the bottom ceiling plane. The ceiling plane that we previously drew is above that and then finally the cathedral ceiling, which will remain in there until we close the room. If you zoom in, you can actually see the two ceiling planes are at a different elevation. And when I drew that over in the plan view against the inside of that wall, because of the slope, it's gonna have a different height. So let's go ahead and determine how to correctly set that. As I open up the ceiling plane specification, I'm going to lock the pitch, and on the outside bottom height, I'm gonna enter in 109 and an eight. Press the tab key, and you can see what will happen to the inside. That's actually going to drop it down and extend it out, and that should exactly even up those two ceiling planes and merge them into the same location. Now they're exactly at the same height, and that's how I can set that. Since the ceiling plane is on the inside of the main layer of that wall, if I were to frame this, you would see that the framing member is actually not bearing on the outside of that wall. I typically would never frame this because I'm going to have the truss form the ceiling framing structure for itself. Let me undo that and extend that ceiling plane throughout the rest of the room, and we can take a look at the way the truss will form in here. Let me just go ahead and pull that across to the room edges and then I'll use the copy and reflect about. Then I'll use the truss tool here and we'll drag a truss through here and then go back into the view. And now you can see that that truss has formed the ceiling framing that we need. Again, you typically might, when you use a truss, raise it off plate. In this case, I did not. But this way, I did not frame those individual ceiling planes and just let the truss create the structural member for those ceilings. Let me undo that and let's take a look at the final ceiling placement of placing your ceiling planes at the wall finish layer. Now this third approach, again using the ceiling plane, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to snap this to the inside of the wall layer, again purposely making it a little bit shorter. I'm going to go ahead and snap on that and pull it to the wall finish layer. And in the section view you can see that we have the same issue that we did when we drew the middle ceiling plane. To correct that, I'll open up the ceiling plane, again lock the pitch. I want to make sure that that outside and bottom height is at 109 and an eighth. Press the tab key. When you go back into the section view, that should make that exactly even and you can see that. Now the question is, is why would you want to draw your ceiling plane on the inside of the sheetrock? There may be a few instances where you want to create a tray ceiling and maybe this is a flat ceiling plane. Maybe it's sloped. But let's suppose if we zoom over to the previous ceiling plane and you notice that I pulled it away from the wall temporarily. And if I go back into a full framing overview, you can see that I have a full gable framed wall on the end. If I select this ceiling plane and I snap it to the framing layer, notice that that is reduced by the amount of the framing structure in the ceiling plane. And if you open up that ceiling plane and let's say you change the pitch to zero, where you may have a tray ceiling condition, it will then completely remove your full gable wall on the end. In that instance, that's a good opportunity to pull that back to the wall finish layer and then it will not impact your framing or your wall framing as you need it. I've opened up a tray ceiling just to show the example one more time. The outer ceiling plane that I have is flat. If I zoom in and I pull this to the main layer, you'll notice what happens to the wall framing. I have it set to be automatic. It removed that gable. Again, if you adjust that to the main finish layer of the wall, then you will have the framing as you may want it for that end gable wall. To summarize what we've covered in the video, there are three locations for your custom ceiling planes. Typically location number one for the outside main layer when you have a vault in the condition that I have here on my screen is typically drawn to the outside of that wall, to the inside of the main framing layer on the gable end wall, and that's usually the preferred method to do that. There may be instances where you want to draw the ceiling plane to the main layer. If you're going to truss frame, that may be an option. And then finally, if you're an interior designer and you don't care about your framing, you may want to draw it to the wall finish layer. Always make sure when you select your ceiling planes that you check to make sure that in your section views, you've set your ceiling to the right height, and it depends on where you draw on those ceiling planes. 
For more information, you can refer to our support center. We also have additional videos. Thanks for watching.